Construction represents 10% of the global economy and contributes to about one third of global carbon emissions. Green construction is the way forward for making structures sustainable. One solution is to use materials with lower environmental impact. Fiber reinforced polymer is one such sustainable material known for its low carbon footprint, lightweight and resistance to corrosion and chemicals. These are desirable properties for bridges. However, a major factor preventing wider use of FRP is the lack of understanding of joints. Bolted joints in FRP bridges lose tightening over their lifetime. Generally, high strength friction bolts are used in steel bridges to make joints slip resistant. However, this is not suitable for FRP bridges as FRP is a soft material. In this presentation, I will explore the use of resin injected bolted connections for slip and fatigue resistance in FRP bridges. This is part of my presentation at the FRP Bridges Conference in London when I worked at University of Warwick in the United Kingdom. This is how my today's presentation is organized. First, I will introduce the topic. Then I will speak about experimental arrangement followed by injection bolts and test results. And finally, I will end the presentation with some concluding remarks. Fatigue and slip resistant connections are of critical importance in FRP bridges. In case of steel bridges, the traditional way to achieve slip resistance is to use rivets, fitted bolts or high strength friction bolts. However, in FRP bridges, none of these methods is suitable. Hot riveting is unsuitable because of lack of skilled labor and equipment. In, in addition, FRP cannot withstand temperatures in excess of 100 degrees Celsius. Also because of health and safety regulations in various countries, hot riveting is obsolete. It's old fashioned. It's not being used in industry these days. Fitted bolts are expensive and do not provide a practical solution for achieving slip resistance. Fitted bolts are machined on their shanks and installed in reamed holes. HSFG or high strength friction bolts transfer force by friction generated due to preload of bolts. Force transferred in this way cannot be relied upon because bolts lose their tightening over time due to FRP creep relaxation. Injection bolts can be used in place of rivets, fitted bolts or HSFG bolts. There are various advantages such as resistance to fatigue, shock and internal corrosion. These have been previously used in repair of old railway bridges. Injection bolts seem to offer inexpensive solution for achieving slip resistance in FRP bridges and we will see how it goes. Fatigue performance of resin injected bolts is characterized in three stages. Firstly, quality control tests are performed to check filling and curing of resin. Secondly, the design bearing resistance of the resin is determined through static tape tests. Finally, the bearing resistance of resin calculated earlier is used to establish bearing stress ranges for fatigue. This presentation is mainly focused on quality control tests. There are two quality control tests. First, a trial injection assembly with perspex is used to see if resin fills the cavity between the bolt and the clearance hole properly. Second, a static load test is performed to check if the resin is sufficiently cured to resist the applied load. Four tests are conducted using double lap shear connection as per BSEN 1090. It also confirms to minimum requirements of bolted connections in American Society of Civil Engineers pre-standard for well-treated FRP structures. It used to be pre-standard, now it is a, a standard. So I will call it as standard for FRP structures. M16 bolts are used in all tests. Inner and cover plates are made up of protruded FRP material. The picture on the right side shows the test specimen in Dartic testing machine. The slip between inner and outer plates is measured at the center line of two inner bolts with the help of LVDTs. Two tests are with standard bolts and two with resin injected 
boards. Both resins are two-part epoxy resins. The injection boards are produced by drilling a small hole in bolt head and filling the cavity between bolt shaft and walls of the plates with resin. The procedure for machining injection boards is given in BSEN 1090 and ECCS 79. After curing of resin, the connection becomes slip resistant. Specialized top and bottom washers are required to ensure smooth passage of the resin. Injection boards are prepared according to BSEN 1090. A hole has been drilled in the bolt head. The upper diameter of 5.5 gives support to plastic nozzle of injection equipment, while the lower diameter ensures smooth passage of the resin. The bottom washer is placed under the nut. A groove has to be machined in the bottom washer to enable air to escape. The top washer is placed under the head of the bolt. The resin filling was unsuccessful when the top washer was used in the trial perspex assembly. The reason is that the chamfered portion of the top washer got stuck in the threads of the bolt shaft. The bottom line is that with the chamfered portion of top washer, the resin did not flow properly. So we have to come up with some innovative solution to make it possible. Therefore, we came up with two different designs of top washers with six undercuts and the other with 12 undercuts. A trial injection assembly with Perspex tube is used to check resin filling. This is one of the standard quality control tests. Although the washer with six undercuts resulted in smooth filling of resin, the resin flow was much easier and quicker with the washer having 12 undercuts. Therefore, the washer with 12 undercuts was used in all resin injected specimens. In order to mimic the on-site conditions or real-life conditions, the trial injection assembly with Perspex tube was filled both in horizontal and vertical uh, positions because in real life it can't be always vertical or it can't be always horizontal. So we have to check both the conditions. Both resins Secreto 30 and Rangel SW404 filled smoothly using the new top washer design which means that our design was successful. This was one of the innovative aspects of this research that we came up with this different designs so that we can fill the resin properly. To ensure that the bolts are aligned with the center line of bolt holes, a specialized bolt center line location jig is prepared. The unassembled assembly is placed in the jig and then bolts are tightened. Now you would argue that why we are locating the bolt uh, central line when in industry bolt may not be located at the center but here uh, because we wanted to check the ideal uh, situation that how does it affect slip and fatigue resistance that's the reason we used bolt center line jig this slide shows test specimen and the test specimen within a bolt center line jig you can see here that resin is being filled in vertical position within the bolt center line uh, jig and then once the resin is filled then we will detach it from the jig and the specimen will be ready to test this slide shows the test specimen within the bolt center line jig after we fill the resin now this specimen is ready to be tested this slide shows load slip curves for a specimen with standard bolts and having clearance hole the ultimate connection resistance is estimated as 50 kN using ASCE pre-standard for FRP structures. A service load is assumed to be 50% of the ultimate load. After reaching 25 kN, the specimen is cycled 5 times between 0 and 25 kN. The slip resistance, which is the load corresponding to a slip of 0.15 mm, as specified in BSEN 1090 is indicated by dashed red lines here. This is the slide with standard bolts and no bolt clearance. There is no clearance at all. In service load range, the slip is more than 0.15 millimeter, which did not satisfy the slip resistance criteria uh, for bridges. 
These load slip curves are for resin injected specimen with rain gel SW404. The specimen shows a limited slip of 0.08 mm in service load range of 0 to 25 kN. It means that the resin is sufficiently cured to take applied load. This also means that the connection is at least slip resistant. But we still have to check fatigue which will be topic for my another presentation, not this presentation. But this is another specimen with Cicado 30 resin. It suggests that the connection with both the resins, Rangel SW404 and Cicado 30, both are slip resistant under static loading. However, the fatigue performance of the connection with these resins will be established in another research paper. Until fatigue tests are conducted, it's difficult to determine which of these reasons is better? This brings me to conclusions of this research. Two types of resins, rain gel SW404 and CK230, were used in resin injected voltage connections for FRP bridges. Connections with both resins demonstrated slip resistance within the static service load range. A new top washer design for under the bolt head was developed which ensured smooth filling and even distribution of resin. The next step in the research is to conduct creep and fatigue tests, which will be a topic for another research paper. I believe that the resin injected bolts have the potential to provide slip and fatigue resistant connections for FRP bridges. Thanks for your time uh, today. I'll be happy to take any questions, put them down in comments i will let you have the copy of presentation and the paper and the link will be in the description down below the email is the old one now i work at university of east london in 2024 and i will put my uh, contact details in description as well frp composites in civil engineering are mainly used in three applications frp profiles for new build structures frp reinforcing bars FRP in repair and re rehabilitation of existing structures. The research in case of FRP rebars and FRP structures